Hi, my name is Tanya Hanley, and I'm going to be talking today about medical racism in gynecology with a specific focus on maternal mortality. Racism is a topic that is often a point of contention. The uncomfortability and negativity of the subject deem it an inappropriate topic for general conversation. It's my hope that by ignoring the social norm and instead starting and continuing the conversation about racism in America, we can work together to eliminate it entirely. Medical racism is defined by Howard University in their Combating Medical Racism Guide as simply systemized racism, in which there's a dominant racial hierarchy, comprehensive white racial framing, individual and collective discrimination, social reproduction of racial material inequities, and racist institutions integral to white dominion over Americans of color. This is a lot of fancy wording that basically means black people are more likely to die of something completely preventable simply due to the color of their skin. I don't have enough time to delve into the entire issue of medical racism in America. We would be here for a very long time. What I can and do want to talk about today is medical racism in terms of the field of gynecology, specifically in maternal mortality rates. American gynecology was birthed in the roots of slavery. The father of American gynecology, James Marion Sims, began his practice of manipulating and often mutilating slave women's bodies to minimize the deaths that were occurring related to pregnancy and birth. In essence, the slaves that were dying were becoming an issue to the prosperity of slavery. So Sims opened up the first women's hospital in which he treated slave women for a variety of issues, both related to pregnancy and birth and not. A maternal death is defined by the World Health Organization as the death of a woman while pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy, irrespective of the duration and the site of the pregnancy from any cause related to or aggravated by the pregnancy or its management, but not from accidental or incidental causes. Again, this is a lot of fancy wording to say that maternal mortality is any death related to pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. In United States, maternal mortality rates have garnered a lot of interest lately. 2019 statistical data reveals that the maternal mortality rate of non-Hispanic Black women was between 37.3 and 44 deaths per 100,000. In that same year, non-Hispanic white women had a maternal mortality rate of 14.9 to 17.1 deaths per 100,000. This disparity in maternal mortality rates has existed for a very long time. Looking at this graph, you can see that the maternal mortality rate of white women has remained below the average, whereas black women mortality has continued to rise exponentially. When you look at the United States maternal mortality rate in terms of worldview becomes even more disastrous. The United States leads the top 10 developed nations by an overwhelming majority in maternal mortality. This statistic is from the 2018 study where the maternal mortality rate of non-Hispanic black mothers was 37.3 deaths per 100,000. And for non-Hispanic white mothers, it was 14.9 deaths per 100,000. When you dive a little bit deeper into those 2018 statistics, these two maps represent the population concentration of Black people in America in 2018 and the distribution of Black maternal mortalities. The similarities are striking. The states with the largest Black population also have the largest Black maternal mortality rates. And while the increase in population can attribute to some of the increase, it cannot in any way account for it in totality. The most obvious question to ask is why is this happening? Why, what is causing this drastic increase in maternal mortality? I'd like to touch briefly on the overarching systemic failure of the American healthcare system and black mothers. In 2016, the Board of Medical Examiners decided to revamp the death certificate and include a checkbox for pregnancy-related deaths. Study was done in which the maternal deaths were reassessed using this checkbox system. The study showed that in 2016, 
the maternal mortality rate of non-Hispanic Black mothers was 21.4 deaths per 100,000 without the added checkbox feature. Once reassessed, including the checkbox feature, that number rose to 48.6 deaths per 100,000. For comparison, the maternal mortality rate of non-Hispanic white mothers went from 6.2 to 11.8 deaths per 100,000. Why did this dramatic increase happen in Black mothers? One issue that is attributed to medical racism is the difference in standard of care in mothers that have private insurance and those that have Medicaid or state-funded insurance. Statistically, women of color in the United States are more likely to receive pregnancy-related Medicaid. They're also more likely to not have health insurance prior to pregnancy. This lack of private insurance prior to pregnancy is one of the leading reasons why Black women are three times more likely to die of ectopic pregnancies, in which the egg is fertilized and is sometimes implanted in the fallopian tube instead of the uterus. This implantation can cause hemorrhaging and life-threatening infections if not caught early enough. Pregnancy-related Medicaid also ends shortly after the baby is born. In some states, it's as soon as two weeks post-delivery. This leads to Black women often missing their six-week six week postpartum visit. Statistically, Black women are three and a half times more likely to die between six weeks and one year postpartum than a white woman. The most common causes of maternal mortality for Black women is postpartum cardiomyopathy. Black women suffer from this at a rate that is six times higher than that of white women. Another issue that contributes to the vast disparity of Black maternal mortalities is the removal of bodily autonomy and the socioeconomic impact. In recent news, Texas has passed a very controversial bill, the Heartbeat Bill, in which the bodily autonomy of pregnant women has essentially been stripped. Women are faced with jail time for choosing to have an abortion. This effort to control women's bodies and their autonomy over their body is nothing new. In the gynecological world, doctors are pressuring pregnant women into having cesarean sections. This pressure is often focused on the low-income low Medicaid population. These cesarean sections are not often not necessary medically and have severe ramifications for the mothers. Embolisms or blood clots are a common complication from the surgery. These blood clots are often missed when the patient doesn't return for their six-week checkup, which we've already established can have deadly complications. Another reason that Black women are more likely to miss their postpartum visits is because they are, on average, their work date return is just two months after delivery. This quick return date is due to the socioeconomic pressure that Black mothers face. So, what can we do? How do we start to dismantle this medical racism that's so ingrained in the American healthcare system? Well, the answers are simple to name, but extremely complex to accomplish. The first step in dismantling medical racism in gynecology is to create a healthcare system that is universal. And by universal, I mean that everyone receives the same standard of care, regardless of insurance status or race. And while it is optimistic to believe that these standards will always be enforced, it's not practical. There needs to be real consequences attached to the disregarding of these universal standards. There should not be any instances in which a doctor who has a disproportionately high Black mortality rate still has their license to practice. The second step and dismantling medical racism in the realm of gynecology is tr to strategically allocate resources and education to the areas that are most affected. This means educating mothers, really all patients, on their rights as patients. Education is the number one tool in combating disinformation and discrimination, in my opinion. Along with the increase in education is the allocation of funds to create environments that are conducive to a universal standard of care. There should not be good hospitals and bad hospitals. Every hospital should be equipped equally and employ workers that will sustain an equal opportunity environment and implement a universal standard of care. 
Finally, and most importantly, we need to dismantle the ties of white patriarchal supremacy in America. This is going to be a monumental task, considering that America was kind of built on it, and almost every aspect of American society has some tie to white patriarchal supremacy. The first step, again, encourage and enhance education. Education is the way to begin unlearning what we have been taught for generations. We also need to begin eliminating the systems that continually create the environment in which racism thrives. We need to revamp restructure every system to create new ones that promote equity and equality, true equality, not just fake words. Finally, I'm going to leave you guys with the words of Martin Luther King Jr. Black power alone is no more insurance against the social injustice than white power. Truly to change the American healthcare system and in a larger aspect, American society, every culture in America needs to work cohesively. Thank you so much.